Hi, good evening. Good evening and welcome back to the QuickBooks um, seminar. Um, last time we were going through some different features going down the file menu from QuickBooks. And today we could look at the edit drop down in the section called preferences. So I'm going to share the QuickBooks. And we have here edit, drop down, preferences. Give a moment to get the speed. Okay, edit, drop down preferences. You could follow along um, when you hear the prompts or you could just watch as I'm going through. So we have your preferences and I'm gonna go inside the preferences and I'm gonna start off with the first thing called accounting. Accounting under my preferences uh, has a check called autofill memo in general journal entry. That could be on, that could be off. The default is that it's set to off. So whatever you're gonna see here are defaults. Sometimes it's checked, sometimes it's not checked. And just to give you an example, why would you have the, the, the memo, the autofill memo in general journal entry is that if you wanna have a reason why we made that debit and the credit, for example, we went into the company general journal entries and I will show you that we have here um, we have here, okay, this was the reversal. They put in the me this uh, memo called reverse of journal, gener general journal entry. In our case, we did not put in any memo, any description, but you might decide to put in depreciation expense and write what it is. And then automatically next time you put in depreciation expense, it's gonna assume that that's what the memo for depreciation expense is. Or if you had auto insurance and one time you will have uh, written in the menu in the general journal entries. So then it's auto gonna, it's gonna fill whatever you wrote last time by that insurance. If you were itemizing a car, for example, if you had, if you had Geico insurance and all state insurance and almost one car, once another car. So every time you put in Geico, it's gonna tell you why you, what's the memo from the last time you put in Geico. And when you put in, um, actually this is, um, this is the account, this is not the payee. So again, when you put an insurance expense, it's gonna give you the memo what you put last time under insurance expense. It's only, you can only put one type, unless you have a sub in insurance, but I don't see why you would have a sub uh, insurance expense by name. But that's the idea that you, one time you put in the account, you're gonna put the memo, then next time you put the account for the debit and the credit, it's gonna put in the same memo. Let's I'm gonna go back to the preferences. Now, the main thing I was getting to is the company preferences. We have here two types of, remember the chart of accounts. We have them listed in order of um, the drop down menu. If we go control A, you'll see it's by default, it's sorted by type which will give you the balance sheets, which are the permanent accounts on the top. And you have over there the, for, in order of liquidity. Okay, so if I go control A, you'll see the bank accounts, that's a cash. Then is accounts receivables, that is also cash, convertible to cash, it's not cash yet, but you will get cash for it. So it's convertible to cash. 
Then you have inventory assets, which are the sales weren't done yet. So you have to try to work to convert those items into cash, but the account receivables, you have to collect in the services, but the sale was done already. Then you have fixed assets, which are harder to move, you know, starting with furniture and continuing on with the home. Okay, so that's the assets go in order of liquidity. Then you have the liabilities, that's the payables, and then you have the, which is credit cards, you have long-term liability, then you have equity accounts. Some people, they have what's called numbered accounts that they'll put accounts by numbers, starting with the one, and it could be a five-digit number, six-digit number, starting with the one. And all the numbers that start with one are assets. And all the ones that start with two are liabilities. The ones that start with three could be income. And the one that starts with four could be expenses, etc. So that's the option they're giving you here is again in the preferences is if you want to use um, account numbers and the default is that's off but require accounts is a must because that force now it does show you here that you could theoretically uncheck accounts and not save the account but that's going to be a nightmare at the end of the year because if you're not going to remember or you're not going to take the time now when you're putting one or two entries at a time to decide what is this what type of expense is it is it an income? Is it a, is it a cost of goods? At the end of the year, you're not going to go through thousands of transactions trying to remember what they are, who's this pay, what it is. So you can choose an uncategorized account for some. You can choose to ask my accountant for some. But in general, at least you're choosing a account and you're making a conscious decision on some, um, on some transactions not to choose which account it is to classify. And then underneath the accounts, you have what's called class. It's another way of sorting information. In addition to having expenses, right, or um, accounts not only for expenses, accounts is for everything. You have what's called class, which is, could be by location. Like we, so we mentioned, if you want to track not only the service, like we had before, we have the service uh, income and we have the merchandise income, we have expenses. How about I want to go further and track it by the class, which is the locations. If I have a chain store of three, three, four locations, I want to see a filter. I want to be able to check the income from one place versus the expenses from one place. Not, I don't want to look all general the business. Even the business is making money. Maybe I have to downsize or close one of the locations. So that is class. And you could check use class and prompt us on class automatically if you would choose class. Because the default is if you want class, you should be assigning it as it goes in, right? Using class tracking but not assigning the classes is almost like not choosing an account. But it's not the same because that's why it only will give you a prompt and here it gives you require. Okay. Uh, automatically assign general general entry number. Obviously, it goes along um, in the... And, and, and then it keeps adding numbers. So whenever we have, we're holding out general journal three. Next time we go to do a general journal entry, it's going to go to four and to five uh, sequentially. Now we have here warn when posting a transaction to retained earnings. This is the warning we had originally when we were using the member's equity account it was telling us we should use a separate equity account set up, which we did was Ruben's equity. And you had two ch um, checks asking to warn if transactions are going 90 days in the past or 30 days in the future. Um, I'm not sure right now what your um, default was. I might have unclicked it. I think this default is usually selected 90 in the past. They assume that you're not more than three months behind in entering information. And if you're making an entry which is more than 90 days in the past, Maybe you're choosing the wrong year and they want to get, you know, you're going to affect a previous year's PL. You're going to either re overstate the income or under overstate the expenses, and you're not going to get the, when you make this year's report, you are going to be under reporting the information, under reporting the income or under reporting the expenses. So it's telling you, um, warning you if it's nine days in the past. And the same thing is if it's more than 30 days in the future. Maybe by mistake you put in next year for whatever reason. You look at a calendar and you put in the wrong date accidentally. 
Closing date is what we said when you're going to send to an accountant. Um, you're going to close it. You could set the closing the books. It's not necessarily only for accounting. It's also where you want to close the books. You ever heard expression, we close the books for this year. We don't even want to go back and look previously. If we find any mistakes, we're going to make the adjustments in this year. So last year is closed and it's done. We're not reopening it. That's in the accounting. Going down to the second thing, which is bills. So if you recall, we mentioned that the default is bills are due 10 days after receipt. That explains why when we went to in the, in the, pay, in the vendors, when we go to the pay vendor, pay bills, when you see a bill for due and 6-4 from a car's firm, right? And you would go to the bill, you could, you, we know that that bill was created, go to bill was created 525. But the default is, right? The bill, we entered a bill for, for 525, bill due was 6-4, that's 10 days in the future. You can change that by, again, editing your preferences that uh, maybe you have a bigger, um, a larger grace period, maybe you have 25 days, maybe you only want to do it for a week, whatever it would be, that would be the, you, you would enter the correct amount over here. You might have a 30 day term, whatever it is. Then you have warn about duplicate bill numbers from the same vendor. Obviously, if the vendor is sending you a second bill, you don't want to be like autopilot. Okay, I got a bill, we're going to re-enter it, I'm going to pay it. And for you know, it's an error on their end and you already paid it. And why should you pay them extra money? So QuickBooks is smart and gives you the default that, again, this is assuming that you're taking the due diligence and you will enter the bill number from the vendor. When you get go to bill, if you recall, you had the option reference number. This is where you would put in what is the bill number from the person giving it to you. So you would see if it's a duplicate. And let's go back to the preferences. Okay, so my there's no um, personal preferences in this section, but again, we have here paying bills. You could automatically use credits. That means if I have two bills from uh, a vendor and the first one had some defective merchandise, for example, let's say in the case of TLS, TLS, we bought from a car's farm. There were two, three books that were damaged, and those are $2 a piece. And then we bought the uh, MR for 50 cents. If we have three books that are damaged and we want to get a $6 credit, when we go to pay the bill, we shouldn't pay the full $100. We should only pay 94 So these are automatically use the credit, or it's going to... Um, we have to manually select it. For example, when I go to um, company, a vendor pay bills, come uh, vendor pay bills, we have here what's called set credits. In this case, we don't have any credits to set yet, right? Set credits. But if you did, and you would want to pay the bill, we'll automatically use the credits to pay the bill or you would have to first press the button set credits in order to bring up the credits. So again, this is a, a preference which by default, it's not selected. And the same thing with discounts. If you see in the bill, we have, we're looking at bills. So this is appropriate window to, to, to com compare to. Sometimes a vendor has official price of hundred dollars will give you 10% off and you get a discount. And maybe you want to save that discount for something else for whatever reason. So this is um, the discounts used, credits used. And right now the default is, is um, unchecked. But if you were, you were to use a discount, what would be the proper discount account to use? Most likely it would be a cost of goods in this, in the, um, by default, if you were a merchandising business. So all your discounts will reduce your cost of goods. If you're not primarily a merchandising business, then the discounts, is, the discounts wouldn't reduce your cost of goods, it would reduce some other expense that you have. There are many, many, many preferences that you could tweak. I'm not really gonna, we'll, some of them you could go through 
and figure out yourself as you go along. Um, I'm going to go over to the my preferences. Okay, so th when you write checks, when you go, when you do Control W, right? What comes up? So obviously, in our case, um, we have Chase. I also have a Citibank. You would choose over here which bank you want to use, and it'll go directly into it. See, if I would go right now and do Control W, what would happen? It will bring me up a check, and the bank account is Chase, primarily because Chase is alphabetically comes before City. But if I'm decided for the reason to switch over to City, I could have open checks rights to um, City. Right? Maybe you want to write checks and pay bills. You have a you have a preference. You know, you can have several several accounts. You have a sales tax account. Like it brings you over here. You collect sales tax, and the sales tax goes directly into a separate account that you pay weekly or biweekly or monthly or quarterly, whenever your sales tax is due. Usually, usually it's um, it probably dep depends on the amount, but usually you have to file quarterly sales tax. But you want to put the money on the side that shouldn't get spent accidentally. So you might have a separate account for sales tax. But the same thing, you know, when you receive money, where do, maybe Chase is a, as a savings account and the operating account the city, but the, alphabetically it doesn't line up. So here, I ch once I, I check this to city, then when I close checking and I go control W, actually it should probably have to go out of QuickBooks and restart it. but. What would happen is QuickBooks would then we do control W and write the checks out from the city account. Um, so now that I checked city, I'm gonna test, we'll test this once I close um, QuickBooks and reopen it. Usually when there's a change, it will only take effect when you reopen Windows. It tells you it has to close down the windows and open again. <clears throat> Bank feeds in the bottom over here is something which is downloading transactions automatically from uh, the bank. And usually it's in a QBO file. We discussed that last time. QBO is the online downloads that we take from Quick for QuickBooks. And there are two modes. There's express mode, there's classic mode, uh, which is beyond the scope of the session right now. Going over to the general tab. So if we go into my preferences, again, we start from left to right. So we have here, um, enter moves between fields. You could do that also right now. We have tabs, go through fields. When you type, remember we said, if you, it automatically brings a drop down list when typing. So when you type in N, and pit and vendor automatically national did would show up because N is there. And maybe, you know, um, one other company would, would come in, but you would eliminate the need to retype out the whole name. You could just select it. When you type in, um, actually, yeah, you have Nest, Paper Goods, and you have National Grid, but only would, would screen filter out what is for the letter N. When you put in the letter M, you might have Ami Magazine, Makar's Farm, Machin Shalayim, but that's it. Beep when recording a transaction. Some people like to hear the beeps. Um, it warns when editing a transaction. That means if you go into a transaction, it doesn't automatically save it unless it says you've changed it. Make sure you want to save it. You have the option to bring back one-time messages. Obviously, the default is that it's off because the point is that usually they're one-time messages and then they go away. But you can bring it back if you'd like. If maybe you want to get the tips that QuickBooks tries to offer you when you're going through. And same thing, warn when deleting a transaction or an unused list item. This is a very useful feature, automatically recall information, right? The default is that it's there, but it's the second one. That means anytime I'm gonna enter a bill for Con Edison, I don't have to choose utilities because utilities is already there, right? It might not be the last amount, that's why uh, we don't have checked automatically called last transaction because then it'll bring you also the last amount and it fluctuates. Uh, if you have a leased car, every month you can enter, it might be the same amount, uh, probably will be the same amount, but 
then it's going to bring everything always the same amount and you have to edit it. So you have that option. You could have it always remembering the same amount and then just manually changing those that are not the same, or you could just have the expenses and put in the amount. And the default date is the last date entered. You can choose today as a default, but this is what uh, QuickBooks has inserted. And that's why when we came into QuickBooks and we continue from May, it's still in May. Um, okay. Uh, sometimes you might have changed custom information when you, when you change the transaction. And if you want to, if you change the transaction, I'll ask you, do you want to keep what you edited before or you don't want to keep it? Let me take a pause over here, see. Okay. Um, occasionally QuickBooks asks you as a precaution to set a password for a file. So you could choose whatever password you want. Usually it has to be at least seven digits. Sometimes it has to be a complex password, which means you have a, um, a capital letter and or, and or a number, perhaps even a special character. Those are standard requirements and and passwords to make them secure. Um, right now, my QuickBooks did not ask me that, but it's possible when you reactivate when you activate a software and you're doing a file, it might ask you for to set a password. Um, what other preferences will be interesting at this point? They ask you if you want to see digit years in, in four digits or two digits. Obviously, you only have to enter it as two. If you're going to the previous year, like I said, if you're doing Jan, if you're doing uh, the, we did an entry for five ish Glick from 12, 28, 2019, all you have to do is 12, 28, 1, 9, and QuickBooks already knows that it's 2019. You, don't, you, you only have to put a two digit year when you enter it, but QuickBooks will change it to four. Or you could unclick it and say, I don't mind if I only see the two digit year because we're not doing 100 years of transactions. Now, the default year transaction is the current year. If I would only do today 12-7, QuickBooks will assume that we're talking about 2020. So if you were talking about a different year, whether it's 2021 or 2019, you would have to enter the year. And QuickBooks also has login settings for different users, different security levels that you could do when we get the company in the users and passwords mode. Um, items in inventory went to last time when we activated the inventory. So here's where we activate, this is how we started and enabled inventory in QuickBooks. And quantity available. So this was a feature that if you have sales orders, which didn't ship out yet, right? It's sales receipts means you sold it already. And invoices means you sold it, but you didn't collect the money on it. And the sales orders where someone sell, sends you a request for an order. So you might want to deduct that so you don't oversell as the order comes in. And that would mean before the processing time. So they, you know, similar to when you go to an airline and they'll hold the seat for you for 15 minutes till you complete the transaction. And if you don't complete it, it becomes available again. But no one likes to come to start doing the transaction and think the item is there. And all of a sudden they get back an email saying, okay, we're oversold, we don't have it for you. So that's why um, it gives you the option to deduct and the that's the default, the quantity on sales order. And when the amount exceeds quantity on hand or quantity available. Uh, we'll look into that after Hanukkah, see what the difference is. You will get such a warning. Jobs, you have job estimates, people you have pending, awarded, there's different levels. Uh, this, they assume that you create estimates, that's why it's yes. 
And that's why you also have in the drop down menu, you have company, uh, customers, you have create estimates. We did not go into estimates on the customer end. We did not yet go into purchase orders on the vendor's end, but we'll take a look at it as we go down across all the options. So we'll try to go down one or two sections per class, not to get an overload of information. QuickBooks does have the option to keep track of multiple currencies, but if you do enter it, you will not be able to go back and undo it. So decide if you only use one currency, and if you say you want to use more, it lets you know that you won't be able to return it off. So you, should, you might want to back up your company. So we'll do that for now. Okay, and uh, we have received payments ready from customers and invoices. So it tells you, it automatically calculates the payments. That means if you would select the invoice, it would automatically, or more than one invoice, it would already add up the amount of how much money you got. And it will automatically apply payments. If you have a payment, if you have to say a customer give you a check for $100 and you have one invoice for 100, one for 200, will probably automatically apply to 100 to the 100 because it's going to assume that's the invoice you're trying to pay off. And as we discussed many times, undeposited funds is the default deposit to account. Um, it will be interesting what happens if you uncheck undeposited funds, you would have to find another account. Perhaps uh, if you receive the payments, it's going to dump it into, I, I, I um, actually interesting. Um, we could test that out actually in the next sale that we do where it dumps it. <clears throat> you want to send payment reminders for customers. So you can have QuickBooks opening up and it reminds you um, 10 a.m. daily, weekly, monthly to go through your customers that owe you money. Sales tax, we're going to also deal with after payroll. Um, we're going to go, always make you aware of what sales tax is in QuickBooks. And this is right now, it's the drop down menu in the preferences mode. Again, we have, um, if I close out the paid vendors, the bills, let's go back to the home page company homepage, what will be the edit menu? You could choose a register and the register could be anything for that matter. And if when I say anything, anything that has a permanent account, that's what keeps a register. That's what we explained last time. And edit, you could search, you could, you could, you could try to search for tra certain, tra any transaction or bring up a window. Um, if, you, if you're trying to find some transaction, you could give a date, you could give a month exactly, you could give greater than, less than. These are all features in QuickBooks which you could spend time looking at. That's, um, that's in this end. I'm going to take a moment. I had um, a poll that of several questions that I'm going to go through over here. Actually, and this should take about 10. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna leave 10 minutes for this, so it's gonna take me 8 35. Right now, it's 8 35. Um, about 10 minutes is probably five, we'll leave five minutes for these three questions. We're gonna launch the polling on this item here. Question number one If you receive inventory without a bill. Once the bill has arrived, you can do all or not or the following except. Okay, I'm gonna leave the rest of the reading to you. I'm gonna assume that it's okay.
Okay, so we'll give another two minutes for this. these three questions. I see a bit, uh, less than 50% of the people voted. This is not a marked exam, but probably I don't even see who answered what. I'm just getting a general feedback. So it'll be interesting to know this for yourself. Just to enter something. If, you, if you're not sure, just take a, take a lucky guess and you'll see how you do. Um, so the, the idea is that um, probably tomorrow I'm going to send that a list tomorrow um, probably over the next two days I'll be sending out a list of about 25 questions as you can look at and hopefully this will go through on a Questions that we could review after Hanukkah will be on a poll. Um, answer the questions. There is no there is no class on Hanukkah, not not this Wednesday either, as we said in the previous email. I thought it was evident um, that the next class would be the Monday after Hanukkah, Mirza Hashem. Uh, the class is not over after this poll. I just took a pause here, and we'll go on to discuss something else. And the lecture will finish in about a half an hour, and we'll have some questions. Okay, I guess this is as far as people are ready to risk. So we're gonna end the polling in 10 seconds. And we'll review the, we'll share the results. Again, this is, uh, this, this is anonymous. It's just a question of the percentages. Okay, so the question number one. Let's uh, share the results first of all. We'll see what we got over here. Question number one we had, let's see over here. If you receive the inventory without a bill, once to receive, the bill has received, the bill has arrived, what can you do? Um, so obviously we can't, um, We received the inventory. That was, if you recall, in QuickBooks, there's three steps. There's enter inventory and bill. And there's edit, enter bill separately against the received items or we could receive items. So we know we have three options. We can receive items. We can enter a bill against received items and we can enter bill, inventory and bill at the same time. Now, that's all on the QuickBooks end, how we do our books, but it's possible when we received our inventory, we never even entered it. So if we received the inventory without a bill and the bill arrives, we can enter the inventory and the bill at the same time because who says we... If we received 
inventory without a bill, we could enter the inventory and we can enter the bill separately. We could, we can do that. There's no must, there's no requirement to enter both at the same time. And when the bill arrives, we can enter the bill against the inventory already recorded. Those are all options. But how can you enter the bill and wait for inventory to arrive? We already received the inventory. So as the question says, we received the inventory without the bill. Once the bill arrives, we can not gonna wait for the inventory to arrive because it already is there. So the correct answer over here is number three, which I'm happy to see that uh, most of the people actually got and figured it out. Number two, all the entries below are when you can receive a bill. We can receive bills before receiving the service, that's correct. We can receive bills when we put an order, they'll give us a bill assuming we get it, and after we got the service. But when we provide services, we don't get bills, we give bills, we invoice others. So when, when can we receive a bill? except when we provide a service. So the correct answer is, except number, so the, the, here the correct answer will be number one, is the except, we can't receive a bill then. Um, which of the following increases owner's equity? And the correct answer is number one, business profits, because the more profit the business makes, at the end, that's how much we can take out of the company. If we have a lot of expenses, then at the end, it's reducing the owner's equity. And dividends is also taking money out of the company so it's not left. Equity is what the owners have left in the company. So what increases the owner's equity, number one? So the correct answer to question number one here is number three, we, we entered a bill, we cannot enter the bill and wait for inventory to arrive when it arrived. The answer to number two is number one, that we can receive a bill all the time, except for the time we provide a service. And the answer number three again is number one. So it's three, one, one. Okay. Um, let's see if we could. Second here. Second. Okay, back into the host.
Okay, back over here. Uh, let's get the video back on. Any questions? Okay, we're back in the air. Um, I see a question over here. So I want to know why was the answer to number two, number one? Let me see what that uh, question, I already closed out those questions. Well, the question for number one, for number two was, all the entries below are when you can receive a bill accept. And the answer is at the providing service. When you provide a service, you don't get a bill. You give a, you invoice others. Again, you have to know the terms. Receiving, receiving a bill means that someone's billing you. And regardless, you said that we use the word invoices to invoice others and the word bill for entering bills that you have to pay to vendors. That's QuickBooks lingo. And let's go back to QuickBooks over here. So we have here, uh, back to our homepage, We have company financial. If we make a, if we make a P and report, again, we're going to go into greater detail on many types of reports going further. But if we go window, uh, I'm sorry, reports, company financial, profit and loss standard. Again, reports, company financial, and profit and loss standard. And I, we want to edit it not to be this month to date, but this fiscal year, which would mean in this year, it's a calendar every year because we didn't say different. So this fiscal year would show 31625 is this total income. And if I want to know how this compares to last year, what do I do, right? Do we have, we have a year from January through December, 2020. So what we would do is we would go to customize report. That's the under, right under the word company. If you, your sidebar is open or it's on, it's right under the menu bar. You have customize report and you click on, we're still in the recall. We add sub columns for previous year. Okay. So again, we're going to click on the customize and we will go into, right, we already have the date range here. You could, again, re we change it over here if you'd like, but we already did it in the drop down menu. And we're gonna select previous year. Right? Sometimes companies wanna have what's called a year to date comparison. That's a check of year, year to date, but we are just gonna do the whole year because we will not show anything from year to date. <clears throat> if we do year to date comparison, it will be blank because we only had one transaction. And that was from five years ago, look at the end, last week of December. So if we click previous year, now you, you have the option also, if you're dealing with big numbers, you wanna know what's the dollar change amount, what's the percentage from last year, but this is how you would do the selections. Just So I'm gonna click dollar change, but it's not necessary in our case. And the only thing we're having showing up is Actually, um, here, there we go, $70. The only thing that shows up in the previous year is 70. Where does it come? It's not on the merchandise sales, that's still zero, but on the service sales. On the service sales, we have a $70. And this is how you'll be able to compare, same thing with expenses. 
we, we don't show any expenses for previous year being 2019 because we're pretty much, uh, we started the last week of 2019 and we recorded a, a sale, but we had no expenses. We only picked up our expenses this year. Advertising, depreciation, everything is zero. So last year we actually had a net income of zero. We had a $70 income. And since there's no cost of goods, right? So let's, let's get these terms. We have income and then we have gross profit. Gross profit is the first level of profit, which remains after we take out the costs of the goods we sell, which usually is in a merchandise business. Sometimes it could be in a service business if we subcontract services and we sell so on service. So like for example, in the case of housekeeping, if I myself was doing that, we're doing all the types of jobs and we're building them out and we have a payroll, but what happens if we had to subcontract with another company and we pay $15 for service and we sell it for 20, then you would have in your service section also, you can have the cost of goods where 75% of the cost goes out in cost of the goods and you're left with the first level gross profit. After you take out the rest of the expenses, then we're left with net ordinary income. And in, when there's nothing else, like other expenses or other incomes, there's net income. Other income and other expenses is a separate topic. That would come out after ordinary income. <clears throat> ordinary income is what the company does in its regular course of business. And sometimes there are by the way, income, which is not in the regular course of business. So, for example, if companies were getting, you know, PPP income this year, they might have not put it into regular income because they don't want to mess up their reports to see how the business is doing. The business was doing however it was doing due to COVID. Were they affected, you know, or not affected? But that's not regular business. It's other income that landed in the company. And that would be a separate line item, just as other unexpected expenses if there was uh, <clears throat> let's say a, a casualty if there was some uh, you know unexpected uh, uh, not ordinary expense if there was a if there was a, if there was a fire if there was a w water damage so it's a un it's not a, it's a other expense it's not ordinary but in this case we have no ordinary we have no other expenses or other income so the net income is the same so again just to Recap, we have the way the, the PNL works is you start off with all the income that comes in. That's total income. We divide it between merchandise and service income. Then you have the first level of expenses, which is called cost of goods. It's a separate category in itself. It's the cost that you have when you move on merchandise and services. And as we explained, the cost of goods is only recognized when you take something out of the inventory, when you buy the inventory, it's not an expense. It sits in your inventory. Only when you actually sell an item, do you recognize that cost. And the same thing would be if you were contracting someone else's services, you only have that expense if you actually use the person. But on the bottom, there's other fixed expenses. You have Some are variable, meaning you could have it, you cannot have it. Advertising expenses are variable depending on how much you spend on advertising can be more or less homeowners association will usually be fixed because it's a fixed amount always and um, mills is variable your rent will be fixed because we have it's fifteen hundred dollars and we will uh, discuss what happens at the end of the year also when it, we get towards the end of december we'll you know we'll, what happens if we realize that um we paid $1,500, but really the $1,500 was not really $1,500 a month. It was a retainer. It's really $500 a month, but we put down $1,500. So we will account for that in a subsequent class. So this is again, a review of the profit and loss, how it works. And for those who need again, a review on how the equity and liabilities will work, we'll pull up the balance sheet. And then again, I, we could pull up a, a, a comparison to last year. Again, we go to the, we just go reports, company financial. Now the second tab, right? The first one, all different types of PLs. 
but you could just have just the income or just expense, but profit and loss brings it both. Then you have the profit, you have the balance sheet standard. Um, we're not going into all the details, but just the general. And they actually offer you the option right away over here. You can go previous loss, previous profit and loss, previous year comparison. So what I did in a bunch of steps, you could just get that right here by going profit and loss comparison. And when you do that, it actually gives you the change, the dollar sign and the percentage. Isn't that cool? So QuickBooks anticipates different types of reports that you might need. But what it did here was pre profit and loss previous year comparison, but it was to date, as you can notice. So what I did before is I wanted the fiscal year. So you could choose the fiscal year and you can tweak what it gave you. The default of QuickBooks when you went to reports, um, profit and loss previous year comparison was to date. And it gives you the percentage change and the dollar change, but we could go and edit it in the fiscal year. Same thing will be now balance sheet, the way it works, it's, it's, a, it's a specific date. If I go balance sheet, previous year comparison, it's gonna have it as of today's date, December 7th. That's the date, it's a snapshot. Today we have 368 in the bank. Today we have 1567 in accounts receivables. And there was nothing in the bank last year. Even though we made a sale, it was an undeposited funds. Well, definitely it didn't exist as of December 7th. If you would look at last year, last fiscal year, actually this fiscal year. So we're looking at this fiscal year. You would notice, look what you have here. If you, if you would check the whole year, you would show up $70 in the bank because we went back and we made that deposit as of the date we received, we, we made that sale. I mean, even though it was, we, we, we technically recorded it that of November, but we made sure that we put in the, in the, in the sales receipt, we put the date of 1228. And when we were going through the deposits, we made sure to deposit it as the date it was received. Now, if people weren't following, it's possible that you have a zero balance on last year, but it would still be the same 368 today. All it would mean is that it deposited your $70 this year. But other than that, that's what the comparison is. And it gives you the percentage and the dollar sign, but it's a bunch of columns over here. Maybe it's too busy. Maybe you don't want it. And you could go back and just tell QuickBooks, take out one or take out the other or take out both. And I just want to see the, the numbers. But the reason why it's here is because a lot of us can do the calculation by yourself. And we want to get a better idea in two formats. I want to know in dollars and cents, what was the difference in money? Like the, the, how much did I increase or decrease? And I want to know percentage wise, what's in my bank? That is for the review on the PL and balance sheets. We will again do a review, number of classes down when we go to review reports. There's a whole class just on reports, but I find it helpful to um, review this periodically, <clears throat> the reports. Okay. <clears throat> One, another feature which is interesting to note. And we're going to have that when we when we deal with the payrolls and we create invoices. Um, we're going to actually do two steps in payroll. We're going to create payroll, which is just a regular salary. We're also going to do payroll as it relates to um, a task base. That means we do a job for someone, and that person earns money based on the job that he does. There is a thing called income tracker. Income tracker is available over here. If you go to customers, down to income tracker. And this is another window where you could take a look at how our business is doing an analysis. Everyone should be familiar with this red line, the accounts receivable that's overdue. This number we know, 1567, that's overdue we have. And that is the same amount as the unpaid invoices. The reason why it's giving us a, a, a red, um, it's telling us one, one color is just telling us it's open invoice and one color is telling us it's way overdue. There are four overdue invoices here, open. Um, 
one, two, three, four. The one from, I guess, um, the income tracker is keeping track of what was paid already. Open balance. Why is this? It's interesting. We did a sales receipt. Not sure why he's. Uh, we're gonna th we'll take a look at that shortly. Um, the zero estimates out. This is this is the order of we make money first. You make an estimate to sell one, then you get a sales order. Ba now you could bill someone based on your time and expenses, which is going to be part of payroll when you have an expense based on time that you that you bill out. We have invoices that are collected and we have actually paid in the last 30 days we collected uh, Robbie Cohen and another $75 from someone else. So again, this is income tracker and the same way we have a drop down menu, a vendor center, customer center, vendor center, and we have invoices and we have um, bills that we pay and we have income tracker, so it stands to reason that we also have, um, what is this here? A bill tracker here, it's further up at the top, bill tracker. This is another way of taking a look at, again, similar to estimates and uh, sales receipts. First, we start with purchase orders. And we have open bills, we have overdue bills. Obviously they're overdue because they're back in June and today's date is November, so the um, it's over. Though this is already by default is ten days. From eleven nineteen to today is more than ten days, but we did pay, and we're catching up. We paid seven bills in the last thirty days. Let me see. Um, someone's asked me a question. Eight forty seven here. Again, so I see again, someone asked a question, I think I explained it before. What's the difference between gross income and net income? Well, think about it as a check. There's a gross paycheck and a net paycheck. This is what you should get and then what's deducted. So what you should get, and you'll say someone has a check, gets a, a salary of $1,000, but then there's taxes taken out, then he ends up working with a check with 900 or 850 or even 800, whatever it is. His gross check is $1,000, but his net check after deductions is $800. So the same term is used um, by profit. In a business, we have the income, and after paying for, the, let's say it was a merchandising, merchandising business, I paid off the items that I, that I bought, and I sold it. This should be my profit. Yeah, that's what you should have. That's your gross profit. But when you take off all the other incidental charges, such as payrolls, such as sales, Costs and things like that, then you're left with your net with your net income. Let's see. Someone tells me in their income tracker they have. What ask customers income tracker. Um, fourteen ninety five. So I'm not sure. What you're saying, we're <clears throat> the last 30 days. So I'm not sure, number one, what your QuickBooks date is. And I'm not sure if all your invoices were done in the last couple. Um, like you received payments were all in November, or for some items done back in June. We'll have to take a look at that um, on the QA. Which um, is we have a, a couple minutes left, and let's see here before we open up the questions and answers. So this question was answered. Cost of financial, cost of balance, so 
The only three people we should have opened is Mrs. Cook, Gabay, and Yanko. This is our customer balance summary. Again, we do this report by going to reports, customers receivables, customer balance summary. Just to get to the point, what is our open customer? Again, customer balance summary. And we see here, we have Mrs. Cook, who never paid us a dime. We have a guy who bought a ton of books and hopefully he sold well over Shavuos. We'll find out. And Chaim Yankel still owes us $75. And what was it for? He paid us 150 out of the 225. Um, let's try to see back over here. So that's that's the answer. If anything is different, if we double click, you'll see what's going on here. Um, that is open. I'm not sure why here it's showing. It's interesting over here it's showing. Uh, okay, we have here open. We only have um, yeah three people. The total Rabbi Gabay and Yanko and Mrs. Cook. Not sure what was going on before here. Oh. If I click, if I click on the 275, I'll see what I got. Um, and there's, there's nothing unapplied. Everything's received. It's estimate skills. Okay. With, um, so was asking a question. Uh, Susan's asking if I only enter inventory when I sell it, ship it. How do I track what is there for me to sell? Let me answer the question. You mean when the seller ships it? You don't enter inventory until it's in your warehouse. That's the rule. You don't have it. What happens if the truck gets lost? What happens if? You thought they said shipped it and they call you back and they say, you don't have it anymore and they cancel the order. What happens if you get your original? So the same thing with the money in the bank. The money, don't deposit the money in the bank until it goes to the bank. Let it sit on deposited funds. It's not hurting anyone. Let it be a reminder to put the money in the bank. Okay, um, we're gonna go over to, someone asked me, um, depreciation expense is at zero, I have it at $20. Again, if you recall, we have made a journal entry on 11.30 for depreciation expense for $20. But we reversed that entry for December 1st so like this, when I come to December 31st and I put in the two months depreciation for $40, I won't have a total of 60. So it all depends how you make your report. If I have, again, for this fiscal year to last month, right? Actually, it's not here in the, in the report. Depreciation expense, uh, profit and loss. This fiscal year, depreciation is zero. If I go this fiscal year to last month, it will be $20 because QuickBooks is a computer and it does it what we tell it to do. But we come to the end of the year, we have to go back to the accounts and make the proper adjustment, adjustments. That is actually going to lead us to one last thing, which I'm going to introduce today, which is called an audit, um, a trial balance. A trial balance is a term which you have under accountant. Uh, here, account trial balance. This is what account does at the end of the year. They look at all your accounts, all the debits and all the credits, and they look at the bank and they look at the undeposited funds. They look at the cumulative appreciation. In this case, it's already there. They look at all, all the accounts have a have a debit had some debit or credit. They get wiped out, and they have to look where do they need to make any adjustments. Right, because to make proper accounting, was all the office supplies used? If it wasn't used, we're gonna get it. We have to go 
and make an adjustment. Was all the rent expense used? Are there any prepaid expenses, right? And as, this is holds true in the crew. And the cash will be, be totally different, right? It'll be, it'll be different debits and credits. We know that. So um, at the end of the year, of November, okay, so as of November 30th, we have a, a, a credit of the a communal, accumulated depreciation of $20, and that matches the depreciation expense of 20. If I go and make this fiscal year report, depreciation will be zero, and accumulate, accumulated depreciation is zero. And this is a red flag for uh, an accountant who has to look at the trial and say, no, we got we to gotta stick in a depreciation expense. Unless you have nothing, well, this is a question they'll ask you. Do you have nothing that can be depreciated? Well, we didn't even begin with our summer home that's a rental, right? We have an asset, the summer home, a debit. So this is going to be depreciated. The furniture will be depreciated. So you first you take a look at your assets and you look, whatever has to be depreciated, that has to go into the depreciation expense. And that will be an adjustment. There'll be a journal entry tied for that. And then we have to look at all the other expense accounts and see, is everything gone? or we'll make an adjustment that's not fully expensable, right? In a cash method, it's expensable. But in a cruel method, we have to take account for the fact that we have some leftovers. So that was one other point um, I had to point out. And it was also to answer this question of Mr. Anonymous, which again, um, okay. We're going, to, we're going to go over not to enable, we'll go to an order of a question here. So we have, I have here Mr. Frisch, and you can ask a question. Hello? Yes. Yes. So when you, as, as I asked you, by an income tracker, yeah. I had by paid 1495. Okay. So is, is your, um, is, is your thing only coming in, income tracker as a different amount? Do you have in your regular PL? Do you have the same? The PL um, so matches the same as yours. Everything is here the same. Yeah. 342. So let's, let's we'll take a look at this in a second. Um, let's go back here. Customers and contractor. Okay. What What do you have in your breakdown? When you say paid, meaning that 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 people you receive payments. The green box in the corner says fourteen ninety five. Yeah. Okay. The last thirty days. Um, yes. If you. If you so what's the click on what's the what's the breakdown? It's um Rabbi Cohen, Rabbi Cohen is eleven nine, Plenty of Money eleven nine, Shmi Uncle eleven nine, Holtz Club eleven eleven, Rabbi yeah, Cohen so again. Me, okay, yeah, so let me see what's going on here. Type all received payments, all save. Um let me just check a second what my, my today my date is right now. Control I. No, we are, we are 12 7. Let me look at it a second. I, I, probably your number makes more sense. I'm going to go ahead here in the inventory tracker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
My thing is showing 11, 8 to 12, 7. Same here. That's what's... I'm trying to see when, when I look at my, when I, when I receive my payments, but profit and loss. If I look at my sales on the cruel basis, most of my services were, by me, it was done on 11.4. That's when I said it, my main invoice is 5.25, 11.4. So maybe you caught up like, a, like one class later, you entered the transactions. But I did the same. You know what I'm saying? If you would click on your, you see, see how um, we start, I started this, the, um, I'm trying to see, what, I'm not sure, what was the first class? What was the date? 11.2, I think, was the first class. And I think 11.4, we started doing transactions. And then the next week, you, you probably, you probably, you come I back. I got it, I got, I, got, I got a little bit later. later the, yeah, I got a little bit later. The yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. I mean, it's oh. nothing major. I'm just, I was uh -huh. trying to actually see the, if, there's a, if there's an option in income tracker to select a longer period. It's not, right now, it's not showing me an option. Probably, mm -hmm. probably the, the settings, estimates. Right, right now, this is what it, this is what it lets you do. The last thirty days it doesn't give me a, a a larger time period. I could choose customers if, if there's a lot going on, but um, yeah, but you you told me it's eleven four. I, that's the answer. Mm -hmm. But uh, you st you still have the same amount in, in fifteen sixty yeah. seven. Yeah. Right. So again, these are computers. It, yeah, yeah. It is what you put. There's always an answer, okay. You have any other There's questions? The, yeah, that's the same reason probably a lot about bill tracker. It's also not the same. Oh, oh the, the amount that you paid in the last amount. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because we, we paid something earlier, right? Okay, but this idea, but this is something, a window which you're going to use later on when, we, when we're going to do a service for a customer, but it's not just a service like, you know, we're billing them an invoice. We have, we're paying someone to do it. So we're going to see how, how that ties in. It's like another step. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we, so far we just invoiced the customer $75 for, uh, for web design. What happens if we have an employee that we subcontract to and we pay him by the job and for his every hour is $40. So we're going to create an invoice where it's going to show a cost of goods or cost of labor for $40 and then an income for 75 and a profit for 35. That's, Something which is more involving, that's why I figured we'll leave it at, you know, top of Hanukkah. Also, anyway, we need everyone to get their QuickBooks running on payroll, so. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, so this is, got that question. So we enter this live. Someone has 75. So that would be the same answer to Pete. Probably there's, it's a question of the date, the way it was entered earlier or later. But if you already received the money for $200 from Rabbi Cohen, if you received it more, if you entered it more than 30 days ago, however, you know, however you backdated it, but that's the answer. Um, Um, so Moshe has the same qu a question. Is there? What is this here? About nine hundred and four dollars overdue. I guess you have to look into when you put in the invoice, and the, the assumption is that customers also get a certain period of time. What was the default? If we have. Um, Preferences, same way we had in pay, um, under bills, yeah, and the jobs and estimates. The assumption is actually the term, let's look at the terms actually from your invoice. If you go, maybe create an invoice, control I. The assumption is the terms are. Okay, the product is being shipped date. If you go to a service one, the assumption is there's due upon receipt. So the question is when you actually, what are the dates they actually put into it? So look into that and see if you have a further 
question. Um, Um, open instead of overdue. It's open. It's supposed to be open and overdue. I'm not sure what your question is. Um, If I'm an income tracker, and the something obviously open over to go together, you, so you might have received extra payments. You might have entered um, the 339 from Gabay or something as a sales receipt instead of uh, income. So what you have to do is check what's your not just about open. If your your if your account receivable is not the same amount, so you got to check that. That's that, that's our total Moshe. Um, I'm gonna go back to the raised hands over here in a second. Okay. Hello? Yes, hello. Okay, when I'm looking at my income tracker, I'm looking at yours. You have uh, Rabbi Cohn and you have Holtz Clapper. Well, I have uh, Holtz Clapper, Rabbi Cohn, I have your Yankel, I have Gabba. Well, so, no, 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 this I have in my paid. I clicked on my green, paid Rabbi Cohen $200. If you, you are- click, You so click on you, your green, you said? I clicked on green, and this is where I received in the last 30 days. I got 200 from Rabbi Cohen and 75 holds clapper because everything else was done exactly 33 or 32 days ago. So that's why I don't have anyone else paid in the last couple of days. Doesn't yes. change the, the income. By so me, people all I, have, all I have is Holtz Clapper that paid 75, and that's why I only have by the no, 75. Right. Now, if you go and what is your unpaid balance? This is another way. What is your unpaid balance or your next, um, not in the green box, the orange, the orange or red? The orange and red is 1567.25. So you did receive Cohen's money. You just entered him in a, you entered him in a day, which is more than 30 days ago. So how do I rectify that? What's it, what it doesn't really make a difference. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, for, for this purpose is of, I'm just trying, I'm showing you how, how it goes. It's not like gonna, you want to go back, you go to the customer center, you look right. at every column, right. and you look at his last payment and what was the day of his last payment. You'll see you know, the Cohen sales is uh, this payment of $200. When did you receive it? It doesn't, we, say, it doesn't say that. One second, by this fiscal year, Rabbi Cohen, all I see is $525, Okay. Now you, you don't have this. Fiscal, you, well, you have to have all transactions, first of all. I'm not sure why you have them. On the, where are you looking at fiscal year, first of all? One second. If, uh, I went you to told me to go to customer, 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 customer center. Customer center. And yeah. Call. So okay, you should so see. The, on this, the this, transactions? This, on the transactions or customers and jobs? Okay, not the trans, customers and jobs. Not the transactions window here. There's a transactions oh, okay, window, okay. window on the right side. Right. You'd see his invoice, you see his payments against the invoice. Okay, so. His original invoice was 
One second, but by Cohen, I have zero. Balance total is zero. That's what you're showing, but look at the right bottom right. where it gives you um, like where I'm clicking over here. Okay, so I clicked on Cohen and I see I have a payment of 200, an invoice of 600. Right, and a payment of 400. 400. Yes, yeah, sales, sales, sales receipt right. of 100. What's the date of your $200 payment? Uh, 12.25. 12.25 when? 2020. 12.25 didn't happen yet. <laughs> it didn't happen yet, I see. Okay, so that's what it was. So, so it's not open because you received the money already, but uh -huh. it wasn't received in the last 30 days. Okay, how do I fix that? How do I okay, fix so that? You, you double click on it and you change it to 11.25. Uh-huh. Or whatever, I mean... Okay. And the date is supposed to be 11.25, you said? Uh, yeah, we'll put 11.25. Mm -hmm. right. Again, if anyone else out there has questions, and you raise your hand, then I'll be able to uh, enable your audio. Otherwise, it looks like everyone's going to get it off early today. <laughs> um. Okay, so now... Um, Okay, so then I save and close, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, how do I go again to that uh, tracker? That How do I go there? The customer, customers drop down income tracker. It's a few sections down. So it's okay, good. Customer. So now it's 275. Okay, good. It is 275 now. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, this is, let's stop the share here. Okay, does, does anyone else here have a question? Uh, you don't be shy. We still have a couple of minutes here. Um, otherwise, I will be sending out the curriculum, the two pages of transactions, which we will be entering when we do payroll. And we'll be sharing a QuickBook file with Activate Payroll over Hanukkah. And I will also send out some questions for review.